Hey guys, this is Sam and today we're taking a look at just about all of the changes found in iOS 8 Beta 5. Right off the bat, I wanted to let you guys know that iOS 8 Beta 5 is really not that big of a beta update. It feels really small in comparison to iOS 8 Beta 4 probably because there was no new feature or huge UI change. Starting off with the health app, we've got a new little yellow person icon for body measurements. And if we head over to all, we can actually export all of our health data by tapping on the share icon in the top right corner of our screen. If we actually go through the export process, it will give us a copy of our health data in a .zip file format that we can email straight from our phone, maybe even to a doctor, friend, someone who I guess might want to be interested in your health data. I'm probably never going to use that feature, but I guess if someone's interested in sharing their health data through an email, that's what that feature is there for. Heading over to the settings app and scrolling down just a bit, We've got a brand new looking iCloud icon and there's also some more new iCloud icons that I'll show you guys in just a second. And also a kind of redesign in the layout of the settings app. The iCloud icon used to be with mail contacts and calendars with that section and the iTunes and App Store new little layout was with the music videos, photos and camera section. So what Apple did with iOS 8 beta 5 is they combined both of those first two sections from the subsections and group them into their own section if that made any sense whatsoever. Kind of hard to explain a re, not a redesign, but a re-enabling of a layout in the settings app, but there you go. You guys can see that the iTunes app store and iCloud locations have changed just a bit. And if we actually go into the iCloud preference pane, we've got new iCloud icons for iCloud Drive, backup and also keychain. Scrolling up to the top and heading over to photos right under the settings for iCloud, we've got a very, very useful new option, especially if you take tons and tons of pictures with your iPhone. Basically, with these new options, if we check the first one, it will upload the full resolution photos to iCloud and keep a lower resolution photo of the same picture on your iPhone, which is called optimized iPhone storage. As you can see, it says this iPhone is storing device optimized, op device optimized versions. Turn on download and keep originals to store full resolution photos and videos on your iPhone. So the first option is if you want a little bit of extra space on your phone. The second one will just keep full quality pictures and videos everywhere, which is the option that I'm going to keep on because I'm, I guess, a quality kind of person. I want to see the highest resolution that I can. But moving on over to some more changes, taking a look at the keyboard switcher on the keyboard, you can now enable or disable the QuickType keyboard functionality just by simply holding on the emoji or world icon and swiping up to the predictive switch. It's a very odd placement. Placement, it would have made a whole lot more sense to have this toggle in the settings app under your keyboard preferences, but this is what Apple did in iOS 8 beta 5, and that is how you enable or disable the predictive keyboard. Notifications, notification center, spotlight search got a new UI animation, and it's also a lot faster whenever you swipe down. So you can see if I swipe down, the blur is definitely different than it was before also a whole lot faster to actually activate spotlight search and heading back over to the settings app one more time taking a look at the privacy section health now has its own section under the privacy option and also home data from ios 8 beta 4 was renamed to home kit in beta 5. in the photos app i think this might be just about the last change you guys if we head over to the photo section and scroll all the way down to the bottom, once you are in moments, it will tell you when it was last updated, which is a cool little feature if you're wondering why you might not be seeing a photo that you just took. It's probably because you need to update it. You can see it does say last updated just now, so all my photos should be here just after I've taken them. Finally, the last change that we'll be talking about in this video is that if you're on T-Mobile's network, they support Wi-Fi calling in iOS 8. So in iOS 8 beta 5, if you have the ability to make a Wi-Fi call in the top left corner of your screen for your carrier name, it will just say T-Mobile Wi-Fi at the end, which is something pretty cool, letting you know that you can use that feature. 
As always, these are all of the changes that we'll be talking about in this video, but if more are discovered, I will be sure to definitely update the blog post right down below in the description. It will take you over to a blog post on my website where I discussed all the changes that we talked about in this video together, and also maybe more if new changes are discovered after this video is uploaded to YouTube. So I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, you are more than welcome to click that like button down below. And if you are interested in seeing more content from myself relating to future iOS 8 coverage, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that good stuff that I've got coming up in the near future. Once again, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later.